Hey everybody, it's the peak of summer and everybody's gardens are going off. The farmers markets are fully stocked, so it's time to preserve some of this goodness and put it up for the rest of the year. And one of my favorite preserves is the good old dill pickle. I'm making these crunchy and spicy garlic dills that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. I went down to the local farm and I picked all these kind of medium sized cucumbers. Nothing too big here because the smaller and younger your cucumbers are, the crunchier your pickles are gonna be. And they get big, they get all bloated with seeds and water and that's gonna give you kind of a limp pickle and nobody wants a limp pickle. So the first thing I'm gonna do, since I did pick these yesterday, is I'm gonna kind of perk these up by soaking them in an ice bath for a couple of hours. They're not going to need much because they're still really fresh and firm. But if I'd picked these maybe two, three days ago, then I would definitely need to soak these for four to eight hours in a nice ice bath just to kind of rehydrate them and get them nice and crunchy again. Just get, get as much ice water in there as I can. I've got my ice bath going and these are going to soak for a few hours and that's going to give me plenty of time to get set up out here. Oh, I've got jars sterilizing over here. I got my pickling pots over here and I'm getting ready to put together the brine. I'm making a whole bunch today so I'm going to make two gallons of this brine starting with equal parts of vinegar and water. And there's a lot of different recipes using a lot of different ratios of vinegar and water. But I want to keep this real simple, so I'm just going to go one to one. And in go my water. So for these two gallons, it's going to be one and a third cups of salt that I'm using. If you're doing a smaller batch, think around you know, three quarters of a tablespoon per cup and that'll get you ballparks. And this is pickling salt. I'm always using pickling salt here. You can use plain salt, never iodized salt. If you use plain salt, a lot of times it has a caking agent in it that'll kind of fog up the pickle brine. It's not really gonna hurt anything, but it's not gonna be quite as pretty. So, pickling salt today. And I like to add a little bit of sugar just to take the edge off of that sourness. So I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar to this solution. That's not going to make it real sweet. It's just like going to take a little edge off the acidity. So I'm going to bring this up to a simmer, get everything dissolved in there, and then I'll just kind of push that off to the side and keep it warm for filling those pickle jars. Ooh, wait. Now that those have soaked in there, these things are rock hard. You can definitely tell the difference. So that's gonna make a nice crunchy pickle. But we do wanna snip off the end where the blossom was because that can make your pickle soft. Stem end is fine. You can snip both if you want, but absolutely cut off just a little bit down where the blossom was and just pitch that guy to the chickens. Just like so. And now you get to decide what flavors you want to infuse into your pickles by the aromatics that you choose to put in there. I'm going with a very simple spicy garlic recipe today, so I'm going to use some Thai chili, some fresh garlic, and some fresh dill. But you can put in any number of aromatics you want. You could put in peppercorns, mustard seed, just, just regular pickling spice, uh, coriander absolutely sky's the limit so just get crazy with your aromatics and make something that's truly unique i'm gonna pop my chili peppers just a little bit with this little corn popper so corn pop wasn't bad that brine can get inside of there and work on them 
And these babies are hot, so I'm only gonna put one per jar, except there'll be some other jars that are gonna be my private reserve that I'm gonna really load up with the peppers. So I don't want things to cool down too much, so I'm only gonna do a few at a time. Now I'm gonna start by putting one of these dill flowers in the bottom. If it's a real big one, I'll break it up. A few cloves of that garlic. And I'll save this chili so I can put it down alongside and see it because some of these I'm gonna put a whole bunch of chilies in and I wanna make sure I can tell them apart. Now, let's go ahead and start packing my pickles in there. I wanna get, keep them pretty organized here along the sides because I want to make sure I pack as many in there as I could possibly get. So get a nice skinny one down in there. Oh, find a little guy. There we go. Perfect, nice and tight. Slide that chili right down the side there. And now today, I'm actually using some pickle crisp to keep these even crunchier. I mean, there's a few other ways you can do this. You could fold up some grape leaf and put it in there, and that will help keep them crispy from the tannins. I hear that bay leaf does the same, but I'm just gonna use a little bit of science, and the recipe calls for one rounded quarter teaspoon per quart. Just put that right on top. pepper, pickle crisp. Now we'll bring in that hot brine. We'll fill that up just to the first thread of this jar here. Leave a little bit of head space. And that's taking about two cups of this brine, so for this big old batch I'm doing today, I'm definitely going to have to whip up another batch of brine. Okay, now I also sterilize these lids by boiling them for a few minutes. They've cooled enough now that I can handle them though. Now we'll get the rings on there. Whoop, get that stem down there. And if your ring fights you at all, get rid of it, or if it's dented at all, Get rid of that one too, because you want to make sure you get a great seal and you don't have to put these on really tight, just kind of snug. There we go. Now I'll take this over to my canner, get this in the water. You want it to be completely submerged. All right, here we go. Be very careful when you do this. This can overflow or splatter and it's very very hot so yes perfect just submerged doesn't have to be real deep under there just barely under the water is fine and now I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and once this boils I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes I'm not trying to cook these cucumbers at all I'm just trying to purge all the air out of the jars and make a nice vacuum Our 
beautiful spicy garlic dill pickles and now the hard part is actually waiting long enough to try these you got to give them enough time for that brine to get in there and infuse all that good flavor into the cucumber and that's gonna take at least a week but it's gonna get better and better as time goes by so I will often not even dig into these for a month as hard as it is to wait much time has passed and now it is finally time to see how we did got a good seal on all of them there's no pop on the top there all right let's get one of these big guys out of there oh wait Check that out. Let's see if we got a snap. <laughs> but what really matters, of course, is the taste. Mmm. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a great pickle. It is really, really crunchy. Let's see if we can catch that. <laughs> oh yeah, and I actually shot all the video for this last year, so these are just about a year old, still nice and crunchy. The garlic and the dill have really soaked in, and there is a nice little bite from that Thai pepper in there. They're absolutely fantastic. Of course, fermented pickles are also really, really delicious, but that's a different video. Mmm. <laughs> so. I hope you can get out, get in your garden, or get to a local farm, get you a bunch of nice crispy cucumbers, and use this recipe if you want, or even better, mix in your favorite herbs and spices and make something all your own. Thanks for watching! Oh, can't say I'm a fan of that. <laughs>